Hi, welcome to Viewpoints with Ascend Us Travel. I'm your host, Joe, and with me today is our president, Brent Blake. Well, hi, Joe. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Well, here we are, the travel outlook for 2022. Absolutely. It's time for us to give our predictions and viewpoints of what's going to happen next year. Yep, and I know for most of you out there watching this, this is your favorite episode each year. At least the one we get the most feedback on. So let's dive right into it, Brent. Let's start with your crystal ball and uh, give me your, your little predictions here on overall what we're going to see in 2022 when it comes to our industry and travel. You know, overall, Joe, I'm, I'm saying that it's going to be business as usual. Companies are ready to travel but they're ready for any variant or any change that comes their way. So they're able to react quickly as new challenges approach, but in the meantime, they're going to uh, get back to business as usual. Yeah, I think that's one thing that we've seen here in the end of 2021 is, is even more variants have came on. Um, you haven't seen that drop in travel like we did in the beginning when panic first hit. Everyone's just kind of trying to operate through it and, and still get their work done. Absolutely. I've talked to so many CEOs and customers where they're ready to get out and do business again, and um, they're going to adjust accordingly, but they're ready to get out and see customers and have meetings again. Yeah. So I guess it's a little bit more of uh, stay safe, be smart, travel wise. Yeah. And get some business done. There you go. All right. So let's break into each category and kind of look at each topic that we want to discuss. And so first and the biggest one in our sector is air. Yeah, air is uh, quite the challenge right now. In speaking with airline executives, what we're being told is that capacity is going to be fluid. They are smart people. They look at advanced <laughs> bookings and destinations. They see where leisure travelers are creating demand. They're gonna add capacity and pull back capacity accordingly. So um, we think just the best way is to just remain fluid, knowing that schedules are going to change, capacity is gonna shrink and, and be added throughout. And we really think it's gonna be kind of a volatile situation for the first six months. I like that, that's a good one. So let's switch to car. What uh, car, you know, is one of those ones and that was some of the hardest hit by the pandemic as far as inventory and things like that. What are you predicting for 2022? Yeah, what we're hearing is um, on the cars, believe it or not, they reported their greatest profits uh, in a long time. And so from a financial standpoint, they did really, really well. So what was driving that? Well, the corporate traveler wasn't traveling as much, but the retail traveler, the vacation consumer was traveling and they were paying pretty, pretty high rates. So it drove numbers, but because of the inventory was being so small, it drove the prices up. So what we're hearing is that they're on their way to improving the inventories, but we really don't think it's gonna change until summer of next year. And I also think they were operating on some of the leanest amount of staff that they've ever had. And so it also helped them drive up their margins as well, as we've seen in other parts of our industry. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, everybody's kind of dealing with the labor shortage and, and as inventory com comes back, they're yeah. going to hire more people. And so with that, I want to switch to hotel because that one is the one that's had the base labor shortages, right? Yeah, it really has. What we've seen on the hotel side is there's been pockets of really high performance, certain destinations, certain yeah. cities. And as those hotels have performed, obviously the rates have gone up. We also see hotels where their inventory and their availability of rooms is not very high, and therefore they haven't hired the labor back. And of course, uh, they're going to offer discounts. And so again, it's going to be a volatile situation in certain pockets of the, of the city and certain pockets of the United States where the rates are gonna be pretty moving around. Yep, that's exactly what I've seen out there. I've been to some cities, warmer markets in particular, where they're fully staffed, the restaurants open, and everybody's going like gangbusters. And then I've been to other ones, mainly northern cities, and there haven't been nearly the amount of staff. Yeah, I think hotels probably has the greatest dichotomy of, yeah. of feast and famine as compared to the other two yeah. areas. So the last one I want to talk about, maybe most important to us, is the TMCs, right? the travel management companies. What are you seeing for us going forward? There's been a lot of change this year, uh, as well as in 2020 with, with our world. So what are you thinking is going to happen to us? Yeah, and the TMC world went through a, a pretty strong challenge. There was a lot of consolidation in our industry, several brand names that are no longer around. But what we saw is during the pandemic, the TMCs really doubled down on their investment on technology. So there was a lot of new innovation, a lot of great technology. 
we believe it would kind of fast forwarded the adoption of technology by about five agree. years. So we as a company, Ascendus, uh, we put a lot of money investment in our technology and developing our team. And I think you're going to see, uh, I know you're going to see a lot of exciting things from us coming next year. Yeah, and just to touch on your consolidation part of that, I, it's amazing. You open up any magazine and somebody has been bought that week or there's been some type of technology that's been bought by a TMC and integrated in and it just seems like every week it's changing. Yeah, believe it or not, if, if there is a silver lining, I believe that's it for the TMC world is the consolidation really brought a real focus on two things. One was data analysis. You're going to see some really cool stuff. And number two is a real emphasis on the customer experience. So the new technologies that are being developed are, are going to improve both of those areas. Yeah, I would definitely agree on the second one there because I think if there was one part of the equation when you traveled for business in the old days, it was maybe the the, the traveler friction, as they would say, right? And, and it always seemed like TMCs didn't have the, the traveler first and foremost in mind. And if they did, they still couldn't bring those technologies like you could on the on the consumer websites and the consumer side of it to be able to handle the traveler. So I think this is definitely gonna be a benefit for the traveler. There's a lot of change and, and you know internally, we've invested in right. several different online booking tools and the whole experience as they relate when they call our agents. We're much leaner, smarter, and I think a better company as a result. Yeah. So in summary, give me your, your final wrap up here. Everyone's going to hold you to these words that are going to come out of your mouth next. So what, what do we got? Yeah, our prediction is, is next year we'll do roughly between 80 and 85% of our 2019 volume. So um, we're prepared for that. We're hiring and ready to go. And uh, for us, it's uh, full steam ahead. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I've last couple of years have been fun to, to make the roller coaster ride through it, but um, it's been good. So. I appreciate you being here today. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your insight. And I will play this back next December. <laughs> oh, no. So if we're off on anything, you're going to know about it. <laughs> I'll be the first one to know. All right. Well, thank you, Brent. Thank you, Joe. I look forward to 2022. Happy New Year. This has been Viewpoints of the Sendus Travel.